Hello and welcome. Welcome to The Swear Word. I'm Brandon Swear, and this is a show made for the Chili Head community by the Chili Head community. Hey, regardless of your, sp- your spice tolerance, this is the place for all things hot. Coming up on tonight's show, we got hot or not product reviews, we got a guest interview, burning choices, and an announcement as well about our Christmas episode. Uh, if this is your first time checking us out, hey, welcome, glad to have you here, and get ready Because we meet every Tuesday night and review, discuss everything from the world of hot. Show number six starts now. All right. Hey, tonight we got a great episode for you. Uh, we'll be checking out some sauces again from Sam Sauce. Uh, we have three tonight on deck, ready to go, and we'll also be joined by our guest, our guest Chris. Uh, he's from the Scoville unit, avid League of Fire competitor, spicy challenge creator, and uh, destined to make a huge splash into 2024. And he's going to turn up the heat. I'm excited to have him here. Hey, following that, we got Burning Choices back again tonight, and uh, with that, we'll be addressing, after that, we'll be addressing uh, some announcements regarding our Christmas episode that'll come up on the 19th. So, uh, hey, if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and like, comment, follow, you know the drill. But, uh, this helps gut, helps get us in front of the, you know, the right people. It helps the channel grow, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, folks. Well, let's uh, let's check out some sauces from Sam's Sauce. All right, welcome back. Hey, if you're just tuning in, we are uh, we we've done the the welcome, and now we're rolling straight into hot or not. Uh, we have here on deck tonight, we got Sam sauce, we got funky garlic. Um, I've went ahead and published all of these photos of close up so you can see and read along with the ingredients. These will be posted on uh, Instagram. They're already there live now. So if you want to go check that out, also it'll have a direct link back to Sam so you can get straight to his website. Um, also before diving in on this, Wanted to make you aware, if you are just checking us out for the very first time, we did away with the 1 to 10. We're going straight uh, 1 to 5 swear word rating. Uh, this rating is a five, 5 criteria breakdown. And what we do from there is we average it out and get our total swear word rating. Those categories are heat, aroma, flavor, versatility, and burn. All right. First up, funky garlic. Make sure there's a, let's see what we got going on. Okay, good. Give it a good shake. Man, just cracking the, cracking the lid a little bit. You definitely get hit with that funky garlic. Man, that is a nice aroma. Color on this is beautiful. Let's get a good squeeze. I might not have opened that all the way. There we go. All right. Yeah, let's do this. User error. This will give me a better pour anyways. There might be a seal underneath the cap. Uh, Might be stuck. There we go. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mouth is just salivating. This, this, you have done yourself. You have outdone yourself on this, Sam. This is a flavor bomb. I thought last week that uh, Tiger Style really did it. Man, funky garlic is where it is at. I could, 
I could bathe in this and I would be happy. All right, let's read the ingredients. I, I kind of jumped ahead on myself. All right. Uh, so orange habaneros, distilled vinegar, uh, rice wine vinegar, garlic, salt, citric acid, and xanthan gum. Man, that's so good. I'm going back in. Man, that does not let you down. Okay, all right, so let's talk about heat. Heat on this one, it's it's very reasonable. It's it's not going to be anything that would, uh, would, would make you, you know, cower if you were new to the game. Uh, you would definitely say it was hot if you've never had anything spicy or you're just now getting into this. Um, overall, the aroma, phenomenal. If you are into garlic... And fermented sauces in general, this is it. Like, oh, that uh, that tastes, that taste, smell, that that is huge. Here, let me get some numbers jotted down here. Okay, and then aroma. Wow, wow, woo wee. Well, that's a good one. All right, flavor. It, it's very well balanced. It is very garlic forward, hence the name, funky garlic. It's going to let you know that it's a garlic sauce. Um, if you don't like garlic, might not be your uh, not might not be your thing. So, I love garlic. Let me get uh, let me get something down on here. Versatility wise, I mean, you're looking for a garlic substitute. That's it. That's your garlic with a kick. I, I like it. I can see this going phenomenal. Like I'm, I'm already craving uh, or carving out what it's going to look like on Friday night. Whenever I do my normal pizza order, I'm, I'm definitely going to be dipping the crust in some funky garlic. So uh, there we go. Flavor, versatility, and then burn. Uh, burn on this one, it really isn't too bad. I would say the burn is more noticeable than say the initial heat, uh, it, it definitely lets you know that it's, you know, still lingering there, but it's, it's nothing un, unreasonable. It's nothing that you couldn't manage. Um, definitely if you're just entering the game, uh, let's say burn. Okay. All right. Up next, we're going to, uh, we're going to do, we'll save one drop for last since it's, uh, it's got some interesting ingredients that I can't wait to tell you about. So uh, up next, we have the Big Smoky Mama. Let me get the seal popped, and I'll get this uh, red as far as the ingredients. All right. So ingredients-wise, we have cherry wood smoked jalapeno, yellow onion, big mustard mama, fresh garlic, distilled vinegar, water, Local honey, kosher salt, coriander, cumin, chia seed powder, citric acid, and black pepper. It's got that uh, that same great look that the uh, other man. What was that? That wasn't Taiga style, was it? No, it was. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on it right now. Anyways, it, it was on one of the sauces that we did. Uh, oh, pina donata. Uh, Pina Donata, I believe, was chia seed, if I remember correctly. All right. Oh, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal smell. There we go. Get a nice, healthy pour. There we go. All right. Oh yeah. Very, very smoky taste right off the bat. Love it. Um, man, some of that dripping out, couldn't let it go to waste. That, uh, that cherry wood is, is definitely noticeable. Um, it, it's got a nice balance. It, it is very true to what you would expect a verde sauce to be, which is great. 
Um, I, this, I can see this going great on some, uh, where I'm going to be using it probably the most would be on uh, some pulled pork sandwiches, some breakfast burritos, some eggs. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use that majority of that sauce on my breakfast, uh, lineup, if you will. Um, do I think it could go with other things? Yes. But, uh, I tend to favor a nice verde whenever I view my breakfast. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see here. All right. Heat. Heat really wasn't too bad. Uh, I would say it's definitely more noticeable than the uh, funky garlic. The overall balance of the sauce as a whole, the the heat is very on par for that. Uh, it doesn't take away from all the great flavors of the onion and uh, the, the, the overall smoky nature to the sauce. So I would say heat-wise, uh, let's go here. Okay, and then aroma. Aroma's got that great smoky verde. Uh, if you like that that roasted smoky uh, smell, this 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 sauce is going to have a, a wonderful aroma for you. Um, let's see here. All right, and then flavor. Man, all one thing that has been true this whole time for all of Sam's sauces is. The level of flavor and balance is just unlike anything I've ever really experienced whenever trying sauces. Uh, knows his craft on how to well balance a sauce. So let's go here with flavor. Uh, versatility. All right. As I said, I will be gravitating more towards... Uh, breakfast items, um, this really could pair well with, with most. Um, if you're not interested in putting some smoky taste on whatever you're eating, this is probably not going to be the one that you're going to want to um, enjoy with that, with that meal. Uh, burn. Burn on this one. It, uh, it's definitely a step up from the funky garlic. It, it's got a, a nice throat and chest burn, so... Uh, Let's go ahead and put that as okay. Let's uh let's dive into one drop. Give it a good shake. Let's get this cracked open. All right. So as I get this opened up, let's go ahead and get through some of these ingredients. So this one, as I had said before, is it's got a very interesting ingredient in it. Um, I'm sure some of you watching right now already know where I'm going with this, but uh, let's let's read it out. So distilled white vinegar, chocolate chocolate butla, uh, red onion, and here's the interesting ingredient: cold brew coffee. So uh, this is just to uh, shout out the cold brew that he used, uh, Birdie Fuel, the Pond Driver Cold Brew Blend. All right, and then we got black garlic, agave nectar, uh, amber to be specific on the agave nectar, uh, kosher salt, orange peel, citric acid, and xanthan gum. Give it a good shake in. It's uh, interested to see how this goes. Oh wow, that is something. You uh, you definitely get the the coffee notes right off the rip. All right, here we go. Wow, wow! I see why uh, why he calls it one drop. That heat is turned up. Very nice. It, and he he still nails it. You know, coffee is is a very overpowering in most in most cases uh, flavor. Something that you just can't you can't typically mask. I mean, what people do with their drinks by flooding it with milk and et cetera, et cetera. Um, you would think that the other uh, ingredients in this would get washed out, but it doesn't. You taste the chocolate bootla, like. You get the you get the uh, coffee flavor right off the bat, and then you get the chocolate bootla. This is uh, this is a phenomenal 
taste. Very complex and very different than the others. Um, yeah, let's go with here. Heat. Heat is uh, is definitely higher than the other sauces that, that I've tried so far from him. Um, so let's give that one. Yeah, that one, that one's, that one's solid. Let's go here. Okay. Aroma. It's got a great coffee smell. I mean, once again, it's kind of like funky garlic. If you, uh, if, if that was not your jam, the, the garlicky smell, garlicky taste, probably not going to be sauce for you. Same thing would go with this. If you're not a coffee person, if you're, you know, not, not too interested in the whole idea of the coffee scene. Um, you might try it and, and find new love for it, but, uh, ultimately you're, you're definitely gonna need to like coffee for the overall taste. Uh, it's kind of got, um, it, yeah, it, it lends itself better to, uh, I would think like a meaty, hearty, savory dish. Um, so versatility, I would say not quite as flexible as say the, uh, big smoky mama or the one drop or the, uh, the funky garlic, I mean. Um, so let's go here. Okay. Flavor. Okay. And then burn. Burn. Burn on this one. It, it lingers. It lets you know it's there. Um, and it, it, it's like attacking the mouth more so. Um, you do feel it a little bit in the throat, but it, it's it's clinging on good. It's it's there for the ride. So I like that. Um, let's say, all right. Well, let's uh, let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead, and what we'll do is I'll tally these up, and I will get that posted on our socials. You can find the update for how these sauces did the breakdown and the total swear word rating on Instagram. Uh, yeah, I'll have that updated the second the show is over. Um, let's, uh, let's get on over to the guest interview. Let's bring Chris out here. Hey Chris, how's it going? Oh, let's uh, let's see. Got the audio. Oh, there we go. Oh, there I'm we good. Go. How about you? Sorry about that. Oh, no worries, no worries. Didn't know if that was on our end or what. So, uh, no, glad to have you on the show. Uh, man, I've seen and heard nothing but great things about you. Uh, I, I love the energy. I love the uh, passion behind driving you know, positivity through the community. Uh, I like the idea of keeping everyone unified and, and really just being here for why we're here. Right. It's uh it's, it's to ride that capsule. Yeah, absolutely. Wave. So. I appreciate hey, uh, that. Yeah. That's all about. Yeah. Yeah. The um, here, I'm going to flip over to, let's see. So, I mean, obviously you got, quite the quite the record going on here as far as things that you're involved in and and, and stuff that you have going on but uh where i would like to kind of start out you know is really to get to understand what brought you down the path of you know your love for spice and then to dovetail from that into you know what drove you into the, the competition side of things so i've always really been into spice uh, this all stems from when I was a kid. Uh, my my opa, my grandfather on my father's side, uh, he is straight Italian. Uh, he had the crazy accent; would barely understand his his English. Uh, he was avid into spice and growing his own peppers and garlic and stuff in the garden. And when I was a kid, say five, six, seven years old, he used to take me down to the garden uh, with my sisters and feed us chives and garlic and peppers, and I love it. And they yeah. couldn't stand it. And that, that grew in 2008, he passed away. There was a bottle of hot mm. sauce that I was always so infatuated with. He would never let me try it. Cause he'd always said it was too hot for me, but he actually used it to clean the uh, grease off of the driveway because of how strong okay. it was. At least that's what they told me. I don't believe that'd be true now because hot sauce, strong hot sauces like that typically have oils in them. Yeah. But, uh, 
I was always so infatuated, but when he passed away in 2008, my uncle gave me that bottle of hot sauce. Oh, very um, nice. So realistically, that's where my spiciness stemmed from. I always was big into getting eating hot sauces. And then uh, after I turned of age and was uh, going to the bar and that, my bartender, Joel, he uh, he dabbled in spice and he would always give me stuff and it would light me up, dragon's breath sauces and this and that. And I got really into it and I was like, oh, yo, can you get me some sauce? And uh, when you make the wings, can you throw some of your sauce on there instead of the home sauce? And he's like, oh, yeah. Well, Goodness. fast forward a couple of years, 2020. Um, this is where the majority of my participation in this community uh, comes from. In 2020, when COVID hit, and I know a lot of people say this is where their stories stem from, I started the Scoville unit. Yep. Um, this is before I was an LLC. Uh, bef before really any of that, I called it the Scoville unit where the topics are hot, the peppers are even hotter, where I would just talk about anything that's going on in the world, whether it be local, worldwide, politics, this and that, and I would burn why I did it. And review nice. sauce and yep. such. Well, <clears throat> about three months into doing this, I started gaining a following. My brother-in-law was like, man, I like what you're doing here. He's like, let's stick to what you know. Stick to the hot stuff. Remove the politics and that aspect of it, and I'll sponsor you. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'll cover some of your stuff. I'll help you out along the lines. And I'm like, all right, perfect. Let's do it. So it turned into the Scoville unit where challenges are life. I stumbled nice. upon... Ryan and Lee from Today's Adventure, uh, Jason and Kim from Late for Work, and started seeing challenges going on, the Pocky One chip. <clears throat> and then I stumbled upon the League of Fire. And then things just got crazy. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, you know, hearing from others, but also, you know, doing my own uh, research, you've, you've done some pretty wild challenges over the over the years. Um, there's some certain ones that really stood out to me. And then there's a lot that, uh, from my own personal understanding, I have limited, uh, perspective of how that challenge is other than I can gauge what by description, what was in there and how it might end up playing out. Um, so, oh yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the, the the League of Fire side of things really, you know, taking off and, and growing into what it has been is 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 phenomenal. The once again the the love for the group the, the overall group the spice the being in it for all one reason not focusing on all the other small things here and there um, that a lot of people tend to get bogged down on and really unifying everyone is, is nice. Um, so as far as, uh, pepper eating challenges, when, when did that start for you? So when I jumped into the scene with <clears throat> the league of fire, uh, they started advertising that they were having belt matches and stuff like that. And I wasn't very familiar with it at the time. Well, they ended up doing a drawing for the Zest Fest in Texas okay. of people that were going to be involved. And my name just so happened to be picked. And I had never competed in a pepper eating contest before. I've okay. eaten peppers here and there, but I've never eaten pods one after another after another. <clears throat> so right away, uh, my buddy Jason from Life Work and I just started training together because we were both going to be up on stage together. And... At this, I still didn't know Jason that well. We were still fr fairly new to knowing each other, but we just dove in. We were video calling each other, doing lives together, eating pods left and right. When I first started practicing for this, I couldn't even do 12 pods. And this was three months prior to the competition. Wow. Wow. Every week leading up to that, I I, I don't want to say three months. Let, let, let's say, yeah, we'll say, yeah, it's about three months. So I did a couple different videos of me training, whether it would be with hot sauces or tinctures. Because everybody's like, oh, I'll do tinctures, oh, I'll do challenges, oh, I'll do hot sauces. Everybody's different. Every aspect of this community and challenges, sauces, tinks have a different type of burn in a different way and it affects you mentally and physically. So me and Jason are like, well, if we're going to eat peppers in a competition, we got to eat peppers. So I had 12 peppers and I'm like, oh, I got to beat my best. And it was 20 peppers. And then the last video that I did and I, I my last training session before Zest Fest, I sat down and ate like 40 some peppers. I think it was like wow. 45 or something like that, somewhere around there. And I was just powering down pods. 
And I was going into this event, like not knowing what was going to happen, not know what I was going up against. And uh, I, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie, I was nervous. I've never traveled for competition like this before. Uh, my wife went along with me. We, we flew down to Texas. Flying down there was a disaster. Uh, our flight ended up getting delayed nine hours. We were supposed to go down there and meet up with everybody at Zachary Goot's house and do some recordings for the upcoming Hulu show. So I didn't even get recorded. So uh, it was already off to a bad start. That next morning I ate maybe two hours before the competition. And I was really getting in my zone, and I ended up crushing it that day. I ended Very up nice. coming in second place. Uh, I hung I hung in there. I lost by like six seconds in the speed round. It was in, it was intense and it was it was weird because everybody that you asked when they did their interviews leading up to it, uh, like Johnny Scoville, Jif, uh, I'm trying to remember who else was in there. Be like, oh, who do you think is going to win? And they're like, oh, I think Bat Pants is going to win, or mm -hmm. I think the Atomic Menace is going to win, or Mike Jack's going to win. And here I am sitting down at the bottom. I'm like, all right, I see how it is. That's fine. <laughs> I like being the underdog. And then there I go coming out of nowhere. And it's all I know is the last thing I remember hearing during the competition is Johnny Scoville just standing behind me going, you're almost there. Finish it. Finish nice. it. You're going to beat him. And it was just like, and it was like a flash. Yeah. It, it was honestly, it was amazing. And that had to, to be, great be honest. Feeling. Huh? I said that had to be a great feeling. Oh, it was like, I was, I was very emotional. Like I, I couldn't, I was upset because I, I lost obviously, but it was still a win in sense because I've never done this before. Nobody really knew who I was. I was new to the game. And it was just like, hey, here's Chris. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, this is actually this. This is the, the most common. This is the most accurate. Uh, this is from the one uh, this year. The one the year before that was from uh, Zest Fest in Texas. That was the West. This one's the West Coast Sauce Festival. Okay. But um, the funny thing is, is Beth and I were supposed to leave that next day. And we ended up having our flights delayed and canceled. So we ended up getting rebooked and re, re -sta staying down there an extra day. And they're calling us and like, like afterwards, like, oh, if you could, since you guys are staying, would you be interested in you and Jason participating in the amateur competition the next day? And I'm like, yeah, screw it. Why not? <laughs> Might as well. And my wife ended up being a part of it. And they're like, oh, we got something else we want you guys to do. We're not going to have you compete in the amateur competition. That's not fair. I'm like, whatever. They're like, how do you feel about going for the seven pop primo world record? I'm like, what yeah. do I got to do? Like, oh, well, Johnny Scoville ate 29 of them. All you have to do is beat 29. We'll say you and Jason up side by side, start recording. The cameras will be in front of your face because this is all, this is all like, it, it was so happening so fast. And it was like, yeah. Jason and I were like, oh yeah, let's do it side by side. Let's do it. We're a team. They put the bulls in front of us and they separated them. They said one bull has a little bit more than the other. Here's how it's going to go. I'm like, okay. And again, I just did the competition the day before. Yeah. Um, so I was not an, by any means ready for this. Jason was still recuperating from the day before. He was still cramping. Yeah, that's that's the new one. That's the good one. But uh, yeah, Jason was still cramping a little bit from the day before. Everybody was still pretty rough off. And I'm just sitting there like, all right, let's do this. I had no aftermath except for the 45 minutes after the competition where I was literally hugging the garbage can fighting with the secured uh one of the stage people because they wanted the garbage can to clean out the stage and i was literally throwing up and she's like i need that garbage can i said unless you're gonna let me throw up in your shirt you're not taking my garbage can and the, the security guard's like just let him have it he's dying yeah yeah and i'm like laying on the floor cramping on a concrete floor here comes goot lays next to me and holds <laughs> like let's hold hands while we cramp so there's photos of us cramping together uh but then like i said the next day we sat down and it was just surreal. I sat down. Uh, Jason got to nine and he tapped out because he was already cramping the way it was. Yep. And I just kept going. Uh, before I knew it, I was at 30 and I'm like, I don't have to keep going. And they're like, oh, you're going to keep going. Shahina's like, ah, oh, you got this. You're going to do all of them. Kept going, going, going. 24 minutes and some odd seconds later, I had eight and 69, seven pop primos, 250 some grams and Man. more than doubled the previous world record. And, I've held on to it since. That is no small feat there. That I mean, no. that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's one that I had uh, I had heard about and and really wanted to dive in more to that. Um, that um, once again, that's no small feat. Definitely, whenever uh, you know, compounded with the day before, your your stomach was was already you know 
beaten and battered at that point. So the, the fact that you got 69 of them down, you know, even regardless of the, the day before that, that is just kudos to you there. Um, have, have you done anything since with the uh, seven pot Primo since, I mean, uh, now, now that that's a, that's a pretty substantial lead. So, I mean, have, have you leaned on that at all? I, I, it's, it's definitely one of my, it's my, one of my top achievements in this whole thing. And I have my, uh, my world record card that I got from League of Fire that has that on there, the gold card. I haven't really done anything with the seven pot since. Okay. Uh, I've been in communications with Troy Primo. He's actually one of my sponsors, uh, the Primo Army. Okay. Uh, so I appreciate him for that. They send me stuff every now and again. Uh, really good people. Uh, I love Troy to death. He's definitely a genuine person. Oh, yeah. uh, he definitely brings a lot of light into this community and brings very positive vibes, which people need. Yep. Um, and he has some insane peppers, like insanity. But oh. uh, no, I haven't done anything with the seven pot. I contemplate it. Uh, dabbling to see if I could have broke that 69 because the only reason I stopped is I was out of pods. Yeah. I ate the rest of the pods that were left over from the competition the day before. Hey, so I had no, I have not dabbled with uh seven pots since then. That's uh, that's pretty remarkable to, to clean the clean the complete bowl on that. So that's that's awesome. Um, man, what uh, what would you say? I mean, it sounds like that could have been it, but uh, just for question's sake uh what is the most challenging challenge that you've done i was actually think I, I i figured you're gonna ask me this question i was actually <laughs> thinking about this before i came on because that's one of the questions that people are always asked in this community is what is the hardest or most challenging challenge you have done i don't want to say any of them are actually challenging itself to complete in my opinion uh -huh. i i would say the hardest ones to complete are probably uh, any of the chocolate bar challenges, whether it be the Nemesis, the yep. Curry Experience, the Moab, because it's just a lot of it's chocolate. So chocolate, yep. And you really have to prep yourself for it because if you go in there too full, you won't be able to eat it. Yep. Uh, and then you also have to factor in the burn. But when it comes to me with burning, I have come so far since I started. I wasn't even able to do – that was the first challenge I actually failed was the Nemesis bar. Uh, and it took me almost a year and a half to two years before I tried it again. Yep. No, and that's... that was the only challenge that I failed on to date. That's the only one I've ever failed on. Uh, and I also was the first person to ever complete the egg curry experience, okay. the chocolate bar with pepper X in it. Okay. The, uh, uh the, the Willie Pete stuff is it, it's tasty chocolate. Sure. Um, it's very good. But the, the, the two pounds is just, it's brutal. It is so brutal. I, I remember doing the Moab. Um, I, I ended up having to stop. I had like two squares left, and it was just like I, I could not, for the life of me, shove another piece of chocolate in my mouth. Which <laughs> also it doesn't help because I'm not I'm not a big chocolate fan to begin with. I like chocolate in moderation, not mass quantities. Um, yeah, I'm not a big chocolate person either. I have to really. It, it's funny because when it comes to candy and stuff. Not really big in it. I, yeah. uh, I I fancy myself on certain candies like Milk Duds or Reasons, and even those uh, wax candies with the with the juice in them. Yep. I'm very selective on the candies. Like I can't just sit down and eat a Hershey bar plain unless I'm actually craving chocolate. Yeah. I can't eat Reese's cups or M and M's or anything like that. It's just it's weird. It really yeah. is. Yeah, I'll do. Um, I guess really the only chocolate that I eat these days is. Um, uh, you know, I guess I'll, I'll plug it. Um, Whole Foods <laughs> has this like, um, man, the, I don't know if it's their deli or they're not their deli, their bakery that makes it or what, but it, it's their version of a giant Reese's bar block. And at first <laughs> when I ate it, it was like so much sweetness, like to the max, but now it's, I'm like a big fan. I'm a big fan of like, if you ever go to like a CVS or a Walgreens, they have those like delic those uh what's the word i'm looking for those high-end chocolates the dark chocolates where it goes oh, yeah, from like yeah yeah 25 percent up to 90 percent yep 
I'm like the 85 to 90 percent of the dark Same. chocolate. I love dark chocolate. The darker the chocolate, the better to me. Yep. And I know it kind of just tastes like chalk after a while, but I just love it for some reason. That, uh, that's that's where I like to gravitate as well. Um, I think the lowest that I tend to go whenever buying a bar like that is like 75, 72, somewhere in that range. Um, but yeah, I like to prefer to stick to that 80 to 90 range. Um, I like the bitter, the savory, the complex, like I like those notes yeah. more so than the sweet. Um, yeah, dark chocolate's a lot better for you than milk chocolate. It's, it's oh, so much yeah. better for your heart and everything. So, oh yeah. But yeah, the, when it comes to this, I would say the chocolate challenges, I ended up going back and revisiting the nemesis and I ended up doing a bar and a half. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Never in a million years will I actually try that challenge again, just because of the <laughs> chocolate factor. Um, no, 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 uh, no disrespect to Willie Pete's. It's just, it's too much chocolate for me. Nah, they, uh, they know their chocolate's intimidating. Yeah, it, uh, it is good. Uh, so like I said, I had two little squares left. Um, at the time I had my espresso machine, uh, rolling and running and I would just drop that bar, that little, like one cube inside the bottom of my coffee cup and pour the shots on top of it and then give it a nice stir. I don't normally put anything in my coffee, but uh, that was that was a nice delight. That and a little bit of cinnamon on top. Yeah, it was good. And they have a lot more. They have a lot more than just spicy challenge chocolates. They have a, a very good line. Uh, they have one that's called the Claymore. It's a chocolate oh, yeah. bar with pop rocks in it. I, I remember. And they have another that one, one that has have chunks of bacon in it, like fresh bacon. It's so good. The uh, I think it's the Crazy Kimberlin bar that had the bacon in it, right? I think that's one. But, uh, yeah, no, that was, that, that, that challenge was something. Um, all right. Well, on the opposite note of that, what, uh, what challenges, um, or what challenge do you say, you know, was your favorite? What's something that you, you enjoy I, more so than in another? The Unbearable by, uh, Old Agnes. Okay. By far. What, uh. It's I, the best tasting. It reminds me of a. It reminds me of a a Twix Rice Krispie Treat crossover. Oh wow! It has the okay. crunchy Rice Krispie inside, but it has the chocolate of a Twix, and it's just awesome. And if they weren't, I'm not saying they're expensive to, for the means of that not wanting to buy them. But if I were to be able to buy those and snack on them. Yep. It would become very pricey because they're a challenge item and challenge items are typically a little bit higher because of the the cost behind making them, putting them into the packaging that they have to be in, but that is by far the best tasting thing I have ever eaten. Very nice. Very nice. We got a Is that a picture of it right there? Let's see if we uh maybe That's it. All the products that's from Old it. Agnes are delicious. Yeah, their I've orange seen... one is fantastic. I've seen their products. I have actually not yet tried any. I highly any. suggest ordered products from them. They, they have the best brownies on the planet. When I was at a West Coast Sauce Festival, I worked uh, the tent with them for a little while. And Very that nice. was pretty much my prep for the competition was just eating brownies. Oh, the, the, I mean, they've always looked – Every time I see the packaging and, you know, they, they, they do They're a very good job at, at pre presenting themselves and delivering a quality product. Um, so kudos there. I, I definitely need to uh, stop messing around looking off to the screen as uh, Jeff has this pulled up for us. Um, yeah, that's, that's some nice, some nice they, products. Their there. products are phenomenal. The, um, so, you know, cause we kind of, you kind of touched on this earlier. Um, everyone kind of reacts different, uh, you know, whether that be to pods, to sauce, to powder, to tincture. Um, what did you find? I, I know you mentioned that you, you just kind of got into the routine of eating pods to, to prepare for the competition, but overall to continue to build your tolerance up and to keep it up. Uh, where do you see yourself gravitating towards the most? So when it comes to me, I, it, it, this may seem weird, but I don't lose my tolerance. Okay. So I take, I took a four month break, uh, recently and I jumped back in and did challenges and showed no react to people 
gasping for air and crying. And uh, I actually drank a bottle of tincture the other day uh, <clears throat> celebrating Jeff's birthday. And I was just like, wow, that was pretty good. And everybody's like, man, what the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> and it just doesn't go away from me. But if I were to give advice to anybody, I'd say start where you're comfortable. Don't okay. overload yourself right away. Prepping to eat heat by eating heat, it's more important to worry about your stomach prep than anything. Because if you go guns a blazing, which people te te typically do, because they're only concerned about the mouth burn. Mm -hmm. Mouth burn isn't the bad part. You don't prep properly and you don't carb up and you go in and you do something stupid, like eating a whole Carolina Reaper or eating a Pocky one chip on an empty stomach, you are going to wish you were dead. Because <laughs> you're going to get cramps and you're going to hate yourself for at least a half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. No, I mean, I definitely agree there. The, uh, the idea of prepping the stomach is, is very crucial. Uh, I made that mistake a handful of times, um, some knowingly and some unknowingly. But, uh, yeah, no, the, the to, I guess to go from there, I know that you all have products as well that you can, you know, gain points on. Tell me about what products you all have. Uh, so we just released uh, our first challenge item, okay. our first product uh, across the world, uh, overseas and everything available on the League of Fire website. It's also available on the scovillunit.com. It is called the Crossroads. Okay. Uh, it, it is a piggyback off of the Pocky One Chip. And the reason I did that is because everybody comes out with chocolates. Everybody comes, they had the gum that came out. Uh, you have brownies, you have this, you have that. Um Everybody always said, oh, there's like four four different spicy chips out there, but none of them taste good because yep. they don't. They taste yep. like cardboard. They taste like extract. Awful. Yep. I'm like, I want to make a chip that tastes good, but it's going to burn. So we came up with the name Crossroads because when you go to do a challenge, you need to decipher, am I going to do this challenge and or am I going to not do the challenge? Like, is it too much for me? Is it not? You go to that crossroads before you do every challenge. And it. even better is I made it two chips because you eat the first chip, you do your 30 second burn, you're already starting to hurt. And you're like, do I want to do the second chip? You have to make that decision right then and there. You can't wait any more than a minute. That's why I give you 30 seconds burn. And then you have 30 seconds to decide because if you hit that one minute, you automatically forfeit your bonus points and all that other stuff because you can't wait any longer than one minute. So yeah, the crossroad nice. is two sh uh, chips shaped like a skull. Uh, all natural. There's no extracts or anything in it. It's made with Carolina Reaper, Scorpion Pepper, and Ghost Pepper Powder, and it's well seasoned chip. It I first and foremost worry about flavor over heat, and that's ended up what happened. Everybody loved the taste of it. They said it was delicious, but then on that back end, it was definitely yep. scary. Yep. Uh, I mean, those are some uh, pretty heavy hitters that you got coating that chip. So that makes sense. I, I, I'm looking off at the. Uh, the overall packaging here. I, I love what you got going on with it. Uh, My wife designed everything for us. Oh, very nice. She does a great job on that. Uh, speaking of that, uh, you know, sad that she couldn't make the show tonight, but uh, we will definitely have her back on uh, or have both of y'all back on um, very soon. So um, I appreciate that. The uh, I, I have yet to really ask I guess I kind of have some others, but uh, maybe not so direct. Uh, man, there's tons of other competitors to your left and to your right uh, as you're doing these, you know, whether that be pot eating challenges, et cetera. Um, who in the space do you look up to either, you know, to kind of push you to the next step or maybe somebody that just inspires you that's like just getting started? It, it could even be that. So I feed off a lot of things when it comes to competing. Um, if you go back and look at any of my previous videos, you'll see I have a little photograph in front of me when I compete. That's actually my uh, my Opa's military picture from when he was in the military that I keep okay. on the table with me. Uh, he passed away when I was young, so he doesn't know anything about this stuff or isn't here to see it. But that's part of my motivation. But realistically, Beth is my motivation. Uh, she stands in front of me at every competition, screaming at me, yelling at me. So not only do I need to win this, but I have to, cause I want to survive when I get home if I don't yep. win. Yep. Um, <laughs> so I have that, but a lot of people don't sit back and think that 
when you're up there on stage, you're worried about yourself. That's not the case. Anytime I've ever competed on a stage where I had someone sitting next to me, I always showed concern for that person sitting next to me because little do you people realize is that if it wasn't for those people on that stage with you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be doing it. There wouldn't be a competition. You wouldn't have anything to fight for, to push for, yeah. win. So those people are, are a huge reason why I do what I do. And I say this all the time. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the people that watch me, cheer me on, support me, and compete against me. And that's why I always tell people I want not to just be a competitor that's going to to show up and make everybody nervous. I want to push people to limits that they've never gone before. And I've said this a bunch of times over the last year that before I won the belt, I did a massive push in points. Like I dropped 1,800 points in the season. Wow. And that has happened before, but it was from someone that has no is no longer participating and he was doing it full time. And so I'm only like the second or third person to ever do it. But Very what nice. happened was you had Atomic Menace and Mike Jack sitting up at the top for since creation of this. And a lot of people didn't seem to think that they can compete with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of, kind of gets disheartening and uh, people are like, oh, what's the point? And then I came along, uh, somebody that isn't, wasn't familiar with the community that nobody really knew and just started slapping records around and dropping challenges like they were nothing and doing things other people didn't think they could do, like didn't know it was possible. Like, oh, only uh, Dustin and Mike do this. Like, well, where's this guy coming from? After I started nailing down records to the point where I'm currently holding, I think, 10, maybe nine right now total. Okay. People just started doing records buying tons of products, doing multiples thereof, dropping points like crazy, pushing themselves to limits that they've never pushed before. It was noticeable that lots of people were getting more involved in this aspect, doing things that they weren't doing prior to it. And I said, that's the that's how I want to be remembered. When I can't do this anymore, I don't want to just be known as a guy that had an un incredible tolerance that crushed records. I want it to be known that I was that support system that told people you can do this even if you don't think you can yeah. And when I'm sitting on stage and it, at Zest Fest, I sat next to Bob the Voice and said, man, you're okay. Are you okay? Like checking on him in between rounds and saying, you can do it. Just keep going. Keep breathing. Uh, when I was up in on the stage with Jason at uh, New Hampshire, I was like, come on, man. Just keep going. Just sit there. You got it. And any competition. Um, when I went to my last pepper competition, just random strangers and sit next to me. And then my buddy, Kelly Myers, uh, come on, man, you got this. Keep going, push, push, push. Like, even though I'm still competing with them, I want them to keep going, like keep yeah. going, keep pushing. And that's just it. I'm always like that. That's awesome. And I guess that that's, I pride myself on that. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Uh, you know, once again, it, it, it's true to, to what, how you post and how you say things online as well. It's, uh, it, it's it's de definitely refreshing to see the positivity flow through the community and uh you know it's out there i just think we we need more of it visible for the masses to see because uh it's really easy for the the rails to kind of you know fall off or you know fall off the rails on that and, and get yeah. on that negative path and that's the last thing we need as a community. We need to build each other up. So uh, kudos. And it's to that. it's not it's not a secret. There is a lot of negativity, no matter where you go, yeah. no matter what part of the world you're involved in, whether it's sports or politics or art or yeah. com competition eating stuff like that. There's always going to be those negative people. You just got to be able to focus past that and just understand that there's a reason why they are the way they are, and you're not going to change that. Yep. Absolutely. Unless they have an epiphany and hear your words and understand where you're coming from and you can change them, it's not going to happen. But some people just don't want to change. Some people, and I, I want to say this and I'm going to steal a line from uh, a Batman movie uh, when Alfred said to Bruce, Master Wayne, some people just want to watch the world burn. That's just yep. the way it is. Yep. You got to be better than that. You got to, for their negative, you got to add positive. So if Absolutely. they're throwing negative in, just throw a little bit more positive in. You see someone down, and that's why I say I, I, I people loosely throw around the, the definition of what a chili head is. Yep. And it, it could be based off of anybody's opinion. And in my opinion, a chili head isn't just someone that does challenges or burns or eats peppers or does tink. I, I believe a chili head is someone that does all those things, but also 
lift someone up in their darkest times, help them through their roughest patches, uh, is there to talk to them when they need it, to show them, hey, if you're upset, let's let's do a live together. Let's burn it through. Let's talk about it kind of deal. It's not just about that all get a, get a title, get some points, make the rankings, become popular, have views and likes. It's not about that. Yep. Absolutely. And some people may dis- disagree with what I what I have to say about that, but if you believe that just doing challenges and getting recognition for what you're doing as a chili head, you don't belong in this community. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Um, hey, I, I definitely uh, I, I love the conversation here, but uh, let's flip it over to some burning choices. Let's do it. All right. So welcome back. If you are just now tuning in, we just got done with the interview. We're now on to burning choices. Once again, this game is simply a this or that type of a scenario. So uh, first up, let's go with uh, something we talked about in the interview, but uh, a bunch of standalone challenges or a pot eating contest. Oh, pot eating contest all day. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go with, uh, now this would be in context of what you would want to put on your breakfast burrito. Um, are you a hot sauce guy or a salsa guy? Hot sauce. Okay. okay. Tabasco to be, uh, to be specific for my breakfast. The, the original? OG or scorpion. Okay. Yeah. The scorpion is phenomenal. I, I, uh, I end up drinking that bottle. I'll use it on my food and then I just drink the rest. Chipotle um, and jalapeno for the birds. Yeah. Uh, I think I think there's some other sauce makers that do that one better for that style of sauce. Um, all right. Let's go with uh, ramen or Thai curry. Thai curry. Thai curry? Okay. What what uh, what's your favorite? Red, yellow, green? Red. Red? Okay. I'm a, I'm a green fan myself, but uh, I, I definitely like the um, the eggplant that they put in there. That's, that's always tasty. Um, all right. So on a sauce standpoint, do you like a natural sauce or an extract sauce? Natural, 100% of the way. All right. All right. I'm still waiting for the day that some somebody comes out here and they're like, uh, it's got to be extract. I'm just going to know that they're enough. broken. Yeah, they're, they're not human. They're just broken. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, now this one has its own meaning to you. So this one might take a little bit longer to process as far as how you're going to weigh it out. But the hardest challenge you've ever faced or the hottest pod eating challenge you've ever faced? Or hardest, sorry, not hottest. I'd rather do pods over challenges any day. Okay. Okay. Um, so these, uh, these next two are, are not quite on mark, but they're, they're fun. So, uh, rap or rock? What was it? Rap or rock? Oh, rock. Absolutely rock. All right. All right. Uh, and then this one, I, uh, I grabbed from one of your, your socials recently, social posts, uh, collectible ca- uh, cards or collectible toys. Can't they be one in the same? They can, but I'm trying to very well divide because I, I very distinctly remember a post talking about some cards. So there there could be I, – I have an explanation behind this one. Okay. So I'd rather the collectible toys or the action figures, for example, because it's easier to display those collectibles than it is to display cards. Cards, you got to go get the book. you got to open it up. I do both. Uh but I would prefer uh, displaying the collectible toys and such like that. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I, I know you had mentioned that you had a, a, a nice burn that you wanted to you wanted to yeah. take in. So uh, as you get this going, I'll, I'll regret it. why don't uh, why don't you tell everyone what what you got going on here? All right. So I uh, came across a challenge on a group called the Cap Crew. Uh, someone that is a evil genius decided to do a eggnog chug 
where you take eight ounces of eggnog and you continuously do eight ounces with a Robbie, eight ounces with a Robbie, and build up points. Um, so to, to save myself the trouble because there was teams picked and I'm not part of that, uh, and I'm trying to get back into burning hard and uh, making sure people don't forget that my footprint is still very much involved in this community that I'm not laying down for anybody, nor is it that I can't hang with the big boys. So I am going to take a three quarter of the way full uh, bottle of uh, fierce cinnamon tincture, a creation of my own. And okay. I'm going to pour the entire bottle into this thing of eggnog. Very nice. Bottoms up. There you go. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a stir. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't curdle. I'm hoping this doesn't curdle this because that would really suck. Oh, that would be brutal. And I'm probably going to regret this because this is a lot of tink. And I'm going to chug this. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Well, I guess while you're doing that, I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, man, I've loved having you on the show tonight. Uh, it, it, once again, look forward to having you and Beth back on here very soon. Um, with that being said, Hey, the stage is yours. Tell everyone where they can find you and, uh, let them know what uh, you have going on and any, any products you want to talk about. So, guys, you can find me anywhere on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I'm on everywhere. Uh, the Scoville Unit, one and only. Often imitate it, never duplicate it. Just type in the Scoville Unit, one word, on any of those social media platforms, you will find me. You can also find us on scovilleunit.com. We can purchase any of our merchandise. And great merchandise is from people all over the community. Late for work, Creature Sauce Company. Uh, fire in the Hole. Uh, soon to be Chili the Valley, Badger's Chili Kitchen, and some of our own products. League of Fire challenges or just snacks. Uh, and realistically, guys, just if you're interested in being a part of the chili community, don't be afraid to reach out. Just start burning any simple way, whether it's a jalapeno or a hot fry. Just join in with the amazing community. We build people up. We don't put them down. Amen to that. Amen to that. Well, Hey, Chris, it's been great having you on. As I said before, look to have look forward to having you and Beth back on the show. And uh, thanks for being on The Swear Word. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Let's, uh, now that now that Chris is gone, let's, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this show, why don't we? All right. So uh, I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's episode with uh, the Hot or Not review on Sam Sauce. We had, once again, Funky Garlic the uh, one drop and the big smoky mama uh, all these sauces were phenomenal and if you want to catch those sauces for yourself you can head over to my instagram where i will have up close and personal photos of each one of these sauces as well as it directly linked back to sam sauce also in the comments below you'll see not only our guests information tagged below but you'll also see information on the products that were reviewed in today's episode um you know once again huge shout out to podvision io couldn't do this without them they help us put this amazing show on for everyone out there so if you're trying to you know start out your brand you're trying to jump start your brand maybe you have no clue what you're doing and you want to just get some advice i highly recommend podvision io check them out couldn't do this without them all right Hey, this right here, you can catch every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central. Look forward to having all y'all back on. Please like, comment, follow, subscribe, all the things above. We're trying to build up the YouTube audience and the Instagram audience right now. So if you're not subscribed to either of those places, go check them out. Links will also be listed below. Hey, as always, I'm Brandon Swear, and for everything from the world of hot, this has been The Swear Word. <laughs>